Hello and welcome to the first in a series of uh, interviews that we here at OFP will be having with some of our most, more successful traders. The aim of the interviews is to give those watching an understanding of what the traders learn, their approaches to trading, and anything that they think is important for other people to know. So today we'll be interviewing Daniel, who is one of our more successful traders and who has been with us for a couple of months. OFP is a proprietary trading company that was set up in 2021. It aims to give uh, traders access to instant capital when they don't have access themselves. Uh, OFP aims to differentiate itself from other prop trading companies through its greater uh, trader independence. This can be seen through a lack of uh, verification challenges, um, allowance of news trading, and also the fact that the payout rate is of 34% compared to the industry standard of only 2%. This 2% is often caused by people not meeting the, ch uh, the verification challenges that the company set for its new customers. Uh, this greater trader autonomy uh, allows for the people to take their own journey through pro proprietary trading and also means as long as rules aren't broken, everyone can enjoy the trading as it's meant to be. So today we have with us Daniel, who has been with us since the uh, 8th of June 2022. He's had, so far, two accounts, um, which has saw him seeing one of them violated under the supercharge rules. But the second 25000 Canadian dollar account saw four positive weeks of uh, returns and a payout of $560, which is brilliant, and no rule violations. So hi, Daniel. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm not too bad. Thanks for asking. So before we get started in terms of the trading itself, would you be able to give us a little bit of your background? A little bit of myself. I've been trading, I would say, seriously for about two years. Um, the first year it took um, a lot of really studying, kind of learning the charts and going over it. And then this year alone has kind of been like my really, my serious year. Mm -hmm. Overall, I've heard about, I've known about the markets for almost about eight years now. But I mean, I'm 24 years old. So in the past like years prior to this, I've been in school focusing on that and kind of going forward now, I've seen this as a possible future profession. So mm -hmm. I've been focusing more on that now, which is why I'm so keen on learning it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does your educational background have as much to do with trading or is it not in the finance area? Um, it is in finance. I wouldn't say it's completely related. I didn't learn as much as I could have about like the whole economic side from school. I learned more about the, the macroeconomic side or the microeconomic side strictly from trading and studying myself more. Mm -hmm. But overall, my background from schooling is in finance. Okay, that's good. So when you first got into trading, why did you do it as such? Was it like with OFP, was it coronavirus? You were at home, wanted something to do, or is it something that caught your attention for another reason? Um, well, like I said, I've known about the financial markets for a while now, almost eight mm -hmm. years. I was in school, like learning, of course, and trying to get my stuff done. Um, I had a part-time job working at my school also. And um, to be completely blunt, the pay wasn't great. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Corona happened. So, I mean, I lost my job there. So, I decided to focus more on this. Um, after kind of, you know, watching the typical YouTube videos, seeing, oh, you can make, you can flip this account to that account, mm -hmm. or you can make this much. Of course, it's going to catch your eye. but um kind of doing it by yourself a couple of times, it gives you more of that enthusiasm. You can kind of see that you can possibly do this. So, yeah. Sure, sure. okay, that makes sense, absolutely. Um, and so slightly towards your personal life, what do you do when you're not trading? Just to give our sort of watchers uh, an understanding of what's the type or typical trader then? Well, depending on, I, I want to say that I am a trader right now, but of course I'm not where I want to be fully yet. And so to be completely honest, a lot of my time is very much dedicated to the charts. If I'm not trading myself, like I trade during New York session. So if it's not New York session, I'm either looking at charts or I'm back testing on mm -hmm. the slight occasion where I do have some downtime. I'm probably playing with a car or something like I love automobiles. Mm -hmm. so I'll, be, I'll be doing some kind of mechanical work or looking at cars or looking at motorcycles. That's my personal hobby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much. So what I'd like to do now is just look at some of your trades in as much detail as we can. So if you could just give us generally how you trade, where your good, bad trades have been, what's maybe held you back as much as you're sort of comfortable and willing to let us know about. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this. One thing that I do like about you guys is, I mean, some people might see it as um, a little bit of a hindrance until you kind of get used to it. The consistency rule, number one, mm -hmm. I mean, it does help, believe it or not. And um, 
what is it? The other rule is, I think you said your, your risk management, um, yes. risk management system mm -hmm. as well. So as you know, there was one account that was violated. Mm -hmm. I believe it was my, either my second account it was due to, um, I think I went over the daily limit by yeah. a couple hundred dollars, mm -hmm. which is completely fine. But going forward after that with the second account, I find that I do trade fairly pretty aggressively. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I trade during, during New York session. So in Toronto, nine o'clock is kind of when everything happens for me. So between 9 a.m. to about 11.30 a.m. is when I'm aiming to take my positions. Anytime after 11.30, if I don't see anything in the market, I'm not really going to take it. I find that my win rate is the greatest around that time. I've tried trading London session on um, being up early. I didn't have the greatest success with it. There was a few wins, but more losses than wins. After I did some back testing, I realized that, you know, on London session is just not for me. When I went and um, back tested Asian session, I had a lot of losses, so that wasn't mm -hmm. going to work out for me either. So I found that um, New York session was kind of my, like the golden zone when it came to my trading. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Um, so do you, is there anything consistently which you see as a recurring thing when you make a bad trade? Is it location, yeah. as you were saying, like the London and sort of the Asian markets, or is there something else which you'd say is consistently causing you problems? I think that everyone should try to learn where um, their main, like a certain time to focus on. Mm -hmm. Like I've learned that the things that have made me kind of profitable are knowing my sessions that I trade best at and focusing on one or two pairs. Like if you look at my history, I only trade um, US 30 currently and I only trade the NASDAQ. Those are my two main um, instruments that I did trade. I tried trading um, GBP, JPY for a little while. A lot of people do. It didn't work for me. I tried trading in gold. It was a little bit too volatile for me when it came to, um, at the time, the way the market was setting itself out. It didn't work. They just didn't work out for me. Mm -hmm. When I compare those instruments to um, US 30 or the NASDAQ, I find that market structure within those two instruments is very fluid. It follows trends really well and it kind of adheres to um, economic news fairly straight on and positively. Mm -hmm. Good. That's, that's great. And so, with your, uh, you mentioned before that uh, in your good trades, sometimes you've had things which maybe have, held you back from making those good trades even better. Could you go into some more detail there? Yeah. So I'm not always on my computer. I mean, I have my phone with me. I have my laptop with me, but I just find that I'm not as focused when I'm not in my main element. So when I'm at home, I have my, I have a monitor set up to my right hand side. I have my main computer and I have everything laid out. It's nice and quiet. So I find for me personally, I need that a separate space and a separate mind space to have when it comes to trading. Um, when it comes to kind of scaling in, I realized that psychology plays a, a massive role, like mm -hmm. a huge role when it comes to taking those trades. As myself, I would consider myself an intraday trader, but I feel like I want to be a scalper. Although mm -hmm. I find the intraday trades, um, a lot of the time I'm correct on direction and my entries are pretty spot on when it comes to the first entry, but mm -hmm. I'll cut my, my, um, my wins way too short. Sure. For example, I'll take... Um, one to ones instead of one DHL could have given me a one to three or a one to four. Mm -hmm. And so overall on the long run, it just would lead to more um, losses than it did to wins. That's what happened with my own first initial account that I blew or I didn't blow, but I violated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's absolutely perfect. Thank you very much. So since you've started trading and trading with OFP, have you adjusted your mentality? So you haven't necessarily been with OFP very long. But mm -hmm. how would you say maybe since your trading journey overall, your mentality has changed maybe with FOMO, with regret, uh, with that risk you were talking about? Um, definitely. Mentality change has been a big thing that's happened in the past. I want to say, but I believe I started trading with you guys in June. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say so. I know with my initial account that I had in June, if I'm not mistaken, for the last, I think it was two weeks or no, the last three weeks of that of that account mm -hmm. I actually was in um, another country traveling at the time. And so I was trying to trade while I'm on vacation and I'm um, mm -hmm. trying to enjoy myself a little bit, but I realized that, you know what, it's okay to miss out on some setups. Like it's going to happen. There's yes. no point in jumping into the market. It just, it doesn't work out in the end. Mm -hmm. Like you're better off taking your time and waiting for that key setup. Mm -hmm. than taking it, and then when you take that setup, just make sure it's worth it. You know what I mean? Sure. So it doesn't make any sense to continue to take, um, 10 bad trades when you can take three trades that are worth a lot more. Mm, and that's what sure. I've learned personally. I went from taking, like there were some days when I'd be taking um, three to, to 10 trades sometimes mm -hmm. trying to get that one setup to now where maybe on a 
a day like today, I'll take maybe one or two trades. Mm -hmm. And that is even if the market gives me um, a setup. Like for example, today I took um, one trade so far and it didn't give, it didn't work out the way it is. I've been looking at it for the past couple hours. It hasn't given me the entry criteria that I need yet. So if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. If it does, perfect, then I take the trade. Okay, well, that's, that's great to hear. And how do you review your trading? So once, let's say you've done your week, do you use the dashboard? Uh, do you have a journal, maybe a spreadsheet? How do you look back and check how you've done? Um, I do have a journal that I don't really keep track of my each individual trade, but I do have my overall like um, how many wins I had for the week or how many losses I had for the week and per day, how, how many trades that I take on that day. My risk management is almost the same thing every single day. So on a, on a max, I'll risk 1% like for the whole day. And depending on the setup, I can either choose to risk 1% on one initial trade, or I can choose to risk, I don't know, maybe half a percent on two different scaling positions. So I don't have a specific um, trade number that I try to hit that I can kind of review on, but I have a certain risk number. I find that's big, the biggest thing for me, like the risk that I'm going to be putting on the table per trade. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. So next, we'd like to cover some, again, non-trading stuff. So do you have anyone you're inspired by when it comes to trading? Or would you say, would you describe yourself as more a self-driven kind of trader? Um, I do want to say that I'm pretty self-driven, but of course, there's many people that I wouldn't say I look up to, but I do have some admiration toward, um, you know, a lot of the big names in the industry. I don't really relate to their trading style. But it's that they're very good when it comes to their psychology and their mental state. They're very strong-willed in that, and I do admire that. There's something that everybody can learn from. I feel like a lot of people in this industry, whether it comes to um, people that have been doing this for a couple of years or whether it be people that want to come into this, don't have the mental capacity or the mental strength to do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, some people need to realize that you know it's not going to be an overnight thing. Mm -hmm. Some people don't really take that into consideration. So, I mean, they might put a hundred dollars into account and they might turn it into $200 with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know, a couple of days and think, Oh, I've made it and I can do this. But then the next week they go ahead and blow that account and they completely mm -hmm. lose it. I mean, I have blown plenty of accounts and I've lost, you know, my own set of money, of course. But at the end of the day is do you really, how hard do you really want this? Or how much do you really want this to work for yourself? Sure. Sure. And so that sort of nicely leads on into the next question. So what are your future plans with regards to trading? Do you want to make this basically like a full-time job or do you want to try and keep this as a, almost like a side side hustle not many a lot of people might disagree with what i'm going to say but i do believe that you know with enough work and hard work and dedication you can make this into a full-time thing and that's hopefully my goal i'm hoping to get funded with as many people as i can and become you know have as many accounts that i can with different companies or different firms and just keep on going like i said i can i see this as a way that you can become quote unquote financially free but of course that doesn't come without sacrifice and i think people i'm going to reiterate this again because it's a really important point like this sure. does take a lot of mental effort um it's not an overnight thing it's not a one week thing or a two week thing or not even a one month thing mm -hmm. for the for the few that are talented it might be a year thing but for the average person it might take one two five years mm -hmm. you never know sure absolutely um so would you have any guidance for other traders watching this video? So would you say, as you have, it's taken you many years to learn and just learn with even the mistakes? Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that people got to learn when you first start out, number one, focus on psychology. That is the biggest thing. Number two, second most important thing that I've learned, risk management. That is the second most important thing to me. And um, the third thing, learn your trading style. Definitely focus on what kind of trading style you have because Trading is not just a job or profession. It is literally a part of you. Like mm -hmm. your emotions play a huge role in the way you trade. Your mental state plays a huge role in the way you trade. Are you the type of person that is um, very quick and hasty? If that is you, you might want to look into more scalping. Are you the more of the laid back, relaxed person? You might want to look into swing trading. Are you more of the, you know what, I can sit on the chart for about an hour or two hours and not touch anything. That might be more of the intraday trading style. So learn what kind of trading that you want to do. And then once you find what kind of trading that you want to do, look for people that have a similar trading style to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a scalper, there are plenty of scalpers that are um, you can find on the internet. If you're an intraday trader, of course, go toward those people. If you're a swing trader, look for people that are doing really well swing trading. Mm -hmm. um, and just for OFP specifically, what would you say to others about OFP and the overview? Um, OFP, out of all the firms that I've 
gone with so far. At least you guys are the only firm that I've been with when it comes to instant funding. So I can only speak on that part. Um, customer service is great, which I appreciate. And I never like when I had to wait too long from mm-hmm. different messages. I never had that issue with you guys. Um, the rules are strict, but like anything else, they're there for a reason. And once you're, you've been in this industry for a, for a while, you'll kind of understand why the rules are so strict and how much they are beneficial to you. Like the, like I said, the consistency rule, it works out great in the end. It kind of teaches you a, a discipline not to just kind of press a button and do this and press a button and do that. Like it forces you to, to wait for that correct set of work, forces you to be more strict on what you want to take when it comes to a trade. Mm-hmm. Well, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. So um, I'd just like to thank you very much, Daniel, for taking the time to speak to us today. Uh, we're very appreciative of your time. I'm sure you're very busy as well. Um, we hope your success continues. And from everyone here at OFP, thank you very much and uh, goodbye. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>